Hi, and welcome to the 10 square meter workshop. I've long harbored a desire to make a wooden tool chest. You know the sort of thing. Nice slim drawers, pulls, super joints everywhere. The sort of thing that cabinet makers used to make as their apprentice piece. A couple of things have been putting me off. There is, of course, all those dovetail joints to make, quite a lot of them. Plus, I actually already have a box. I inherited it from my <coughs> grandfather-in-law, who was a pattern maker in the early 20th century. It's not perfect, but he made it himself, as they always did in those days. And then I heard about machinists' boxes. These are very similar, but they're made for machinists to keep all the precision gear in, micrometers, gauges, that sort of thing. And that quite appealed. And actually, because they're made of oak, that really does appeal to me. It's a wood I really like. And instead of all those dovetails, it was all slot-type joints, more engineered than handcrafted. And that appeals to me also. I can use some of my machine tools to get those very accurate joints that look so nice. So, here we go. I should be building a Gershner style machinist toolbox. I say style because it won't be a slavish copy of the original because there's some things about that that I don't really like. For instance, the side handles, which are just sort of screwed on. I think they should be flush mounted. So I'm also going to be making my own hardware Oh, I'll buy it if I can find it, but most of it, no, it's really got to be hand-built. So, quite an exercise and it will take a few episodes. So let's get started. I shall be doing this build in an order that makes sense from a construction point of view. Machining operations, etc. But I'm going to edit them so it follows a single topic. It's much easier to follow. And to that end, the first episode will be about the handles. Not because I started them first, but because I finished them first. The starting point was some 2mm thick brass plate, from which I cut two 100 by 60 mm slabs. One was marked out and centre punched for the four mounting holes and the corners. Clamped together, these were drilled out three and a half millimetres. These were used to secure both plates to a block of wood. This was clamped in the milling vise using parallels in the normal way. The fact I'm using wood, which is not that accurate, doesn't really matter because I should be cutting all the way through the plates. The outside of the plates were then machined. This lot not only gets them to the correct dimension, but also gets the references for further machining work. The plates are now 100 by 60 millimetres with a cutting tool at zero zero. With the outside cut to size and the references made, it's now time to hollow out the centre. To do this, I make a DRO map and stick it to the front of the machine. It's very easy to make mistakes when you're doing this, and having a map makes it a lot easier. I start by setting the DRO to my first map point. I'm going to be cutting one millimetre in from the final size. I'm going to plunge cut, which means I need to ramp into the metal. I'm just touching the surface, so I set my Z axis to zero. And I'm going to move along whilst winding in very slowly. I'm going to take about a third of a millimetre per pass. And that's the end of the first pass. Just seven more to go. Halfway there, through the first layer. I've now machined right through. Time to trim the edges. 
With the slot cutter size, it's now time to mill out the two hinge pockets. And here is the cutting out finished. This shows the plates pre and post filing. I then used some one and a half millimeter brass to cut out pieces for the bottom of the wells and some four millimeter strip to form the sides. The strip was bent round eight millimeter bar to match the radius of the corners. The strips fit around the outside of the well with the back fitted on top. These were carefully aligned and clamped together ready for brazing. With a liberal coating of foot on the appropriate areas the glass is heated too much. Let's make sure it gets to all three parts. There's a sort of sticky feeling when it's just about to melt. The tension now shifts to the other faces. And finally onto the fourth face. And here it is after quenching. The back gets a bit messy, but the front is largely untouched. That'll soon clean up. Before and after, polishing and rounding the corners. The handles were cut from a piece of two inch by quarter inch brass, just over 80 millimeters to allow for machining. The slabs were then milled square and to length. With the brass moved to the center of the vise, I then used an edge finder to establish the exact point of the corner. To form the handle I need to cut a U-shaped piece out where I'm going to plunge cut the back of this and then cut into it using a bandsaw. I slowly plunge the tool into the material as I'm traversing to give a gentle cut in. Running on power feed, one just moves back and forwards until the salt's fully cut. And here it is, having broken through. The centre was then band sawed out. It was then back in the mill to tidy up the sawn edges. It's now 10 millimetres all round. And the arms are a snug fit into the pivots. The next job was to round the bottom of the handle to match the curve on the plate. And then fired the outer corners round and polished them up so they fit into the slots. Next step is to arrange the hinge. By doubling up on my parallels I managed to get the right amount showing in order to machine it. Using an edge finder I find the far side of my jaws then offset to take the cutter to the right position. 
I like you just to establish the depth then take two millimeters off full size. With a half a millimeter of clearance the cuts are made. With a two millimeter higher parallel on the inside to compensate for what I've just machined off I flipped over the handle and machined off the other side to form the stop when you're opening it. That involved taking one and a half millimeters off this side. Now comes a spell of hand fitting to get those to fit into the slots and here it is after hand fitting. It's just a tad tight at the moment but that's the way I want it. I shall drill out the hinge pins before finally fitting. The hinge will be a two millimeter stainless steel pin. The drilling of the hole needs to be quite precise. After drilling the hinge pin holes the frame was milled out to take the support pegs at the right angle when the handle is open. The last machining job was to make a small fingernail indent in the inside of the handle to give access when opening. And here it is assembled. In the lifting position it's just past 90 degrees which is what you want and when it's closed listen to this. Nice positive snap so it won't rattle. Upside down it doesn't come out. Happy with that the final polish will come just before assemb final assembly as will the countersinks because I haven't chosen my screws yet. And so there it is the end of episode one of well I don't know how many episodes we shall find out. Hope you enjoyed it I certainly did. Bye for now.